Hey guys, Doc. So we're out here at the farmhouse renovation project and today I'm going to talk to you about fruit flies. House gnats, those little black things that, or things that keep flying around, how to identify them, how to get rid of them. And sometimes it's a real big problem, but I guarantee you, you may not have fruit flies. It might be something else. So hold on. So it's true, you may not have fruit flies. A lot of people think they have fruit flies, but there are three basic varieties of these flies that you're seeing and they all have to be treated differently. They're not the same. They're absolutely different creatures. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to identify them through trapping and through using your iPhone or your camera. That's one good way to do it. Then I'll show you how to actually start to kill them. I'll show you, talk about where they breed, where they live, because all that has to be taken care of if you wanna solve this problem. Okay, so before I begin, in the bottom, in the description, at the very top, you're gonna to see one link and I'll build a web page. And on that web page, I'm gonna have, there's several different products I'm gonna be listing, including some kits you can buy. So if you go over to that page, I'll have them all listed and I'll try and keep it updated. So let me explain real quick why I had to start down this journey. Excuse all the birds. We had a pinhole leak from a nail in one of our downstairs bathrooms we didn't know about. And it must have been dripping and leaking for about a month or so. And they had to open up one of those walls. Well, during this whole process, that little crawl space under there got wet. And all of a sudden we started to have these little teeny fruit flies, I was calling them. Come to find out there weren't fruit flies. And it was a big problem. So I'm gonna show you a way that, the way that I figured out what they were and how to identify them. The first thing I recommend you do, now you can buy, there's two of these little lights that you stick in and they have a sticky pad on them. One is made by Raid and the other one is, what is it, Vivo or something like that. Both of them are really effective. We tested both of them. I bought four of them, two of each, and tested them. And I'll tell you what, you're gonna gross out when you see this picture, but this is a real picture of what it looks like. Now, I've had to change those. When we had our big problem, I had to change those like every few days. I mean, I was trapping hundreds and hundreds of these things. I thought they were fruit flies, but they weren't. So before I go forward, I wanna do a little myth busting. Someone's gonna tell you, and I guarantee you, someone puts a comment in below. And what they're gonna say is, just take a bowl and put a little bit of apple cider vinegar, mix it with water, and put a little bit of Dawn. Cover it with saran wrap and poke holes in it. Okay, we tried that. Matter of fact, here's what we did. We did this experiment. We took one of those bowls and we put it right below the light right below one of these things. After three days, we had a hundred of these flies on the electronic light one, light sticky. In the bowl, we had five. Let me say that again. So that bowl that everyone's telling you about, put the saran wrap, poke some holes, and you'll catch them, you'll catch five. <laughs> the light actually caught a hundred. It was crazy insane. So let's talk about the identification. The first thing you want to do is you want to either kill one or you want to trap one and you want to look at it. Take your iPhone, zoom it in. Now I use a magnetic clip-on iPhone piece. Maybe I'll link to it down there too. And you can really zoom in. You can count the hairs on these things. It's a real good tool for identifying. But let's talk about a fruit fly. A fruit fly generally is a little bit lighter color. It's usually a dark brown or light brown but they have big red eyes. That's how you can identify them. If the little fly has big red eyes on it, varying colors, it's gonna be a fruit fly. Next is gonna be a ferret fly, P-H-A-R-O-D, ferret. And that is also called a humpback fly. That is what we had. Now, when you look at those under a microscope, they actually look like a mosquito. They actually have that weird shaped body, just like a mosquito. They have that little long thing there. They look like a mosquito. The next thing is a drain fly. Now a drain fly doesn't even look like a fly. It actually looks like a moth. So if you kill it and it looks like a moth, that's a drain fly. There's three flies. They have a lot in common, but you do need to treat them a little bit differently. So you have to come up with a plan of attack. If you can identify where they're coming from, great. But usually I couldn't identify exactly where they were coming from. So one of the ways that we did this is we got those lighted traps. I put them in rooms at night and I shut off all the lights. And then I went in and I looked at where they were heaviest and where I found where they were heaviest was sure enough in that bathroom and in the next room over where they were doing that repair. Why is that? It's because all of these flies like damp organic matter. They like dampness, either standing water or dampness. That's what they want. They need that to breed, to lay their eggs. 
So that's where they were coming from. My assumption is that they were coming from outside under a little crawl space or something and getting up in and coming in through little cracks inside the plumbing. So what is the plan of attack? The plan, once you've identified what you have, once you identify the possibility of where they're coming from and you may not be able to identify that, then you need to do the treatment. Now, a lot of these flies are actually gonna accumulate in your drain. So your drain goes up and it has a drain trap. And what's inside that drain trap? Over the years, especially if you have an older house, you're gonna have organic matter inside of that drain trap. So it may start off as an opening this big and then over the years, it, organic matter builds down and they'll go in, especially on that top portion, and they'll lay their eggs in the drain. So they make a product. There's two ways you can clean that out. There's three ways. The first way is they make a microbial sort of natural cleaner. You pour it down there, microbial action goes through, and once a day for five days you treat it and it eats away that organic matter. The next way is just use something like Drano. Just go in there and just keep treating Drano every five days and flush it out. The other way to do it, and be prepared to gag, <laughs> is to undo that drain trap and actually clean that out. Get the organic matter out of there, pour some hot boiling water in there, scrub it out, get it cleaned out, and then reinstall it. But I'm telling you, be prepared to gag. You'll be amazed what's inside there. And that's what they're doing. They're going inside those drains, and a lot of these drain flies and fruit flies and even the ferret fly will go into your drains and actually start to lay eggs. Now there is a product also that I actually bought. I did a treatment and it's a citronella based oil that you can pour down the drains to actually kill the flies as well. So you can pour that citronella, kill the flies, then go back in and use the actual microbial organic cleaner or use something like Drano and flush that out. The next step that I did is I had to make the assumption that I have mulch around my house. And when it rains, that gets wet and I have to make the assumption that my flies, these flies, were actually doing some kind of breeding in that mulch since it was right next to the house foundation and they were probably coming in. So I went out with permethrin, I put it inside a hose and spray bottle, and I sprayed it all around that mulch. I definitely found out I had a centipede problem because I had a ton of centipedes come up dead. But I sprayed around the house with the ferret. The next step, you probably have a crawl space and here's where you need to do a little bit of work. You don't want to go into your crawl space and set off foggers. I'll link to some foggers because what's going to happen is, is you're not going to get out of there in time and all of a sudden <laughs> you're going to be breathing in this fog. So the trick that I've learned is to actually take a box fan. Put your box fan about three or four feet inside the crawl space door and then set your foggers off. You can set two or three of them off and then close that door. Now that fan will circulate that fog all the way through the crawl space and that's the problem. You set off foggers in a crawl space, it's typically not gonna spread all the way around and I've learned that if I set up a box fan, I set off two or three foggers, it'll blow it all inside that crawl space and treat the crawl space. Now you also may wanna check your attic. Go up in your attic, but attics are usually dry, so that's usually not it. They need water, they need moisture. So the plan of attack is, is to stop that reproduction cycle because each one of these tiny little things can lay 50 to 100 eggs. And you start to count that up. If you have hundreds of these things, it can really become a big problem. And it became a big problem for us. As of today, or as of, it took me about three weeks to complete this process, I might see one of these little flies every other day. And it, uh, we leave the lights up and we catch maybe, maybe five to 10 of these things a week. So that multi-prong approach is number one, buy the lights, put them in your, put them in different rooms, shut the lights off at night, wake up in the morning and look at the count, do a count. Are they really heavy in one room? And then look under your sink. Is there a crack on that plumbing that they're coming up or are they coming in the sink? Make sure that that's covered. Then you're gonna to go to the outside of your house and spray around the outside of your house, go to your crawl space, treat your crawl space and then clean out your drain. That's the only way to do it. You have to go in and do a full phase approach to kill all this. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. Now, I will say, if you have a larger house with a lot of bathrooms in it, here's the mistake a lot of people make. They don't go up and run water in their showers. I have a shower upstairs that's never been used since this house was built and it probably won't ever be because it's in a guest room. I have sinks that never get used. Well, that drain trap actually is supposed to have water in it. Guess what? That water dries up. So if you're connected to city sewage or even a, a septic system, now they have a free way to get up inside your house. So you have to make sure, number one, put down some of that citronella killer, 
um, on those extra bathrooms and once a week go run the water for about 30 seconds and fill up that little keep that little youtube drain that little youtube under the sink keep that filled with water that'll help too now if you do have fruit flies and there's just a few of them around there's a good chance that you might have actually fruit or vegetables or produce if you keep that on your counter you need to get it off your counter put it inside of a plastic bag put it inside your refrigerator if you just have a couple fruit flies around it's because there's fruit or vegetables that's what they're eating that's what they're growing in they're laying eggs in there so you may not have ferret flies you may not have the humpback you may not have drain flies you may have a couple fruit flies but if you have those the other thing is keep a knockdown spray they make they make knockdown sprays for flying insects keep it near your trash can when you open up your trash can you see flies come out hit them with that knockdown spray you just have to stay on top of it now one of my more popular videos and i'm showing you this for a reason is my termite treatment video and how you can treat your own you can treat your own foundation when we did this renovation and we opened up I want you to understand that the majority, especially in the southeast, are usually wet termites. They want wet wood. So we just finished putting in, oh, you can't even see it probably. We just finished putting in these little gardens over here. And you can see I pulled back a lot of this mulch in here. I actually just did a secondary termite treatment in here. It's actually pretty easy. You can do it yourself. So one thing you can do is you can go over to our website and there's a search bar on the top. When you get to that uh, search bar on our website, just type in termite and you'll see my previous videos and articles on how do you do your termite treatments. But while we were building this place and redoing, it was a whole year project remodel. While we were redoing this place, we stuck, stuck a couple stakes in the ground over here to mark a foundation for a shed. And within about three weeks, guess what? Termites had started to eat them. Isn't that looking good? Look at that, brand new. This used to just be nasty, nasty, nasty. <laughs> that Bermuda grass out here is just really taken nice. We've, this is our Bermuda reseeding project. If you follow my channel, just a little update. And then yesterday, this was a killer of a project. We cleaned up this area. We put in some fountain grass. We put in some mums in here. We're gonna get a piece of ironwork to go on that stump down there. But man, this Bermuda is really coming in strong. So this is the actual finished product of the renovation maybe i'll put a picture of before and after if you haven't seen the renovation video again it's on our channel i show you the whole renovation showing you the nasty abandoned property that we took down to studs basically and then redid this whole thing it took us an entire year to do the whole property and the house one project i've got coming up which is going to be pretty cool we just did a massive land clearing project in here this was all trees we couldn't see this side of the pond over here we didn't cut down trees we actually had the trees actually remove stumps and all and now we're getting ready to monday they're going to come over they're going to finish shaping this land over here that's going to be a cool project you don't want to miss that then i'm going to order one of these pre-built um, cabins and i'm going to have it delivered and we're going to put it over here i'm going to use it sort of as a studio maybe a little guest house i just finished reseeding this back area over here um, in bermuda and a couple different seeds it's starting to finally take nicely back over here. So I got a whole bunch of videos coming out. Hit subscribe and uh, hope you don't miss them. Duh.